I'm working on some new content that is not just straight up TBRs. So I know that it's a loud muffler. I am and I will check now. I don't know, I feel like nothing comes easy sometimes, but we're just gonna try it this way and see what happens. Hey everybody, it's Audrey, and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be another readathon TBR because Thrillerathon is starting on February 15th. So if you watch my contemporary thon TBR, you know that that is happening at the time that you're seeing this video, and they are actually going to overlap. So I actually thought ahead, and if you again watch that video, you know my contemporary thon TBR is actually jam packed with thrillers. So there is going to be a couple books that I'm going to overlap, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of other books that we're going to talk about. So here's the skinny for Thrillerathon. This takes place from February 15th to the 23rd. It's a nine day readathon. You get two weekends, so it's tons of time to be able to read books. And it is hosted by Harriet Rosie and Emma from Drinking By My Shelf. So I'm gonna link their channels, the dates, the Twitter, um, all the challenges, all that good stuff in the box down below. So be sure to check that out. And then we are gonna run through the challenges here and I'm gonna show you guys all the books that <laughs> I might moodily read uh, during Thrillerathon. So there are nine challenges for this readathon, and it follows the Cluedo board, the game that goes with Clue. So it is Clue esque. If you guys have watched, I want to say it was my December wrap up, I talked about I read In the Hall with a Knife, which is kind of a new book based on Clue. I love the movie Clue. I didn't love the book, but I do love all things Clue. So each challenge coincides with either like a person, place, or thing. So if you do the board right, you find out like who did it where and with what weapon, if that all makes sense. But if you don't care about the Clue part, you can just focus on the challenges part of things. The first three sets of challenges are for people. So we have Dr. Peacock, which is the oldest thriller on your TBR. We have Sergeant Mustard, which is the thriller with the creepiest cover. And then we have Professor Scarlet, who, which is the shortest thriller on your TBR. So let's talk about those books. If we're being honest, I have a lot of old thrillers on my shelf because there's just way too many books back there. And I'm not even gonna get into which one's been there the longest, but a book that's been on there for far too long and needs to be read, and I've talked about it ad nauseum, is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And this is very secret history-ish. This is on my books I need to tackle before I'm allowed to buy The Truants, which is a new book that's coming out that I wanna read, which isn't by M.L. Rio, but it's of the same vein. So this is a group of friends who are in college together and when the book opens up one of the friends is getting out of jail for having committed a murder and the detective on the case never really thought that this person committed it but that he took the blame for his friends so we wind up finding out much like secret history what happened between the friends we go back in time we see what i'm assuming what really happened um and whether or not the person who was in jail was actually the murderer but i have been obsessed with reading this book but afraid to read it because I think I built up too much hype for myself but I need to be reading it so far too long a bit on the list um a thriller with the creepiest cover I picked Still House Lake by Rachel Kane this is also on my contemporary thon list for a green cover book um this will fit multiple challenges in this readathon as well but this is a book where our main character Grace she is happily married they have kids she comes home one day and something happens that winds up revealing the fact that her husband's a serial killer. So her entire life changes, um, arguably not for the better. <laughs> and this is, I don't know if it picks up a year later, but her ex is in prison and she moves the kids away, but then they start being haunted, not like ghost haunted, but like someone is sort of tormenting them. And I think it connects somehow to the murders that her husband is in prison for having committed. So this one just sounds creepy and looks creepy. So it's the, um, let me get out of it, the boat rowing on the deserted lake. Then we have the shortest thriller on your TBR. So I have two that are just under 300 pages. Uh, I'd like to think I talked about them before, but maybe I didn't. The first one is An Unwanted Guest by Sherry LaPena. This is a kind of closed circle. Everyone at the inn, there's a 
snowstorm that comes and somebody gets murdered. So I don't know if it's lured there and then there were none style or if it's really just kind of like somebody dies in the group and then everybody's the suspect kind of a thing. But either way, love all that. I've read a few Sherry LaPena books. I really have enjoyed them. I have heard mixed bag on this, but I'm going with the people who really liked it. And I'm hopeful that I'm going to be one of those people. This is also because it's snowy, it's like a very wintry atmospheric kind of a thing. So I would like to read this one uh, before the month is out. We're supposed to get snow this week, so I might feel inspired by that one. Not looking forward to the snow. And then the last book I have is called Watching Edie, and this is by Camilla Way. And I have not read anything by Camilla Way, but I have a couple of her books on my shelf. And this is a book, it's, um, I don't know if it's really like single white female-ish or if it's just creepy stalkery friend-ish, but there are two women. So Edie was beautiful creative a little bit wild and she just sort of was like everything and anything back in high school and then something changes and now Edie is 33 she's a waitress she's pregnant and she's all alone and she is overwhelmed and feeling kind of bleak and despairing and then it says somebody's been watching Edie waiting for the chance to prove once again what a perfect friend she can be it's no coincidence that Heather shows up on Edie's doorstep just when Edie needs her the most so much has passed between them, so much envy, longing, and betrayal. And Edie's about to learn a new lesson. Those who have hurt us deeply or whom we have hurt never let us go, not entirely. So this sounds nice and creepy. And I guess the cover's a little creepy-ish because somebody's looking in at Edie, but there's so much great praise for this book. I honestly, I don't know why I haven't read this yet. I feel like things just get lost in the chaos back here. So this is another, uh, it is on the shorter side and also actually it's been there for a long time. The next three sets of challenges are places. So we have The Library, which is a new to you author, The Kitchen, which is a trope that you love, and then The Study, which is a recommended thriller. A couple of the books from the first round will fit this trope also, but I have three other books picked. They're actually all new to me authors. So the first one I have is I Know You Know, and this is by Gilly McMillan. I just talked about this recently. This was part of that giant book outlet Boxing Day haul that I did. And this is also a trope that I love where we have a murder that happened 20 years ago. Two boys were killed, found in the woods or by a train track or something like that. It's not relevant. And somebody went to prison for it, but there were kind of always some lingering questions. And 20 years later, one of the boy's friends starts a podcast and he is on the hunt for new information and new clues to what happened to his best friends back then. And understandably not everybody is totally jazzed that he is opening up all of these old wounds, but he's doing it anyway. And we get past in the present, we get a podcast, which I love, and it just sounds like a good, great, fun mystery psychological twist. And I've heard lots of good things about this one too. A lot of people have recommended this one. It reminds me of In the Woods by Tana French. So I'm feeling all sorts of happy vibes about this one, even though it's not a happy story, but you know what I mean? The next book on my list is by Jamie Mason and it's called The Hidden Things. And this is a book that I actually got as an arc during Thriller Fest back in July. And Thriller Fest has nothing to do with Thrillerathon, just another one of those things that all of us thriller people love. But this is, like I said, an arc, it came out in August already, and it's kind of like a heist, it says, um, a heist story taken to pieces and expertly put back together. And this is about a 14 year old girl who, I don't know if she like comes home or whatever it is, but she winds up kind of like fending off an attack in her front hallway. And there's a security camera that catches it. And the camera, the video goes viral because they're trying to find out who the person is who broke into their home. And meanwhile, the video apparently reveals that there's a painting on the wall which was stolen, maybe like, it's a 400 year old painting. And basically this one moment in time where the teenager winds up becoming a hero because she has like fended off this attacker and they wind up catching the attacker immediately has unleashed sort of all of these crazy secrets for her family. So it sounds interesting and like kind of twisted and I love the heist feel of things. So I don't know what all is going on in here. I 
I'm kind of kicking myself for having thrown this sort of far back on the bookshelf, but this one might be a fun one to read. So new to me author, something to try. And then the last one was to do a trope that you love. And I have picked Chris George's Guess Who off of the shelf. And this is another one of those books that I like 100% absolutely had to have it. Never read it. Probably had it for a year and a half. Had to have it. World was gonna stop if I didn't have this book. Bought it from Book Depository. Like that's how much like I needed to have this thing. And I didn't read it. So this is a literal locked room mystery. All of our main characters are locked in a hotel room and there's a dead body in the bathroom or in the bathtub. And it's someone that they all know and someone in the room murdered the person and they need to figure out what happened. So it says a waitress, a cleaner, an actress, a lawyer, a student, everyone is a suspect. And it says that they have three hours to find out what happened and who done it or they all die. So it's, the rules are simple, the game is not. I mean, again, these are all things that I love in the world. I don't know why I haven't picked this one up. So this is another contender. And every time I do one of these TBRs, I get obsessed with like certain books and I, I don't even know, but this one sounds like super fun. The third challenge for part two was a book that has been recommended. Everyone and their dog, it seems, recommends Stillhouse Lake when I talk about it or bring it up. Leanne from Literary Diversions is the first person I saw raving about this book, but since I have put it up on my different TBRs and things, all of you guys have also said that it's a great book to read. So we're taking this as like a recommended book across the board. And then the last section is items. So we have for Candlestick, it's the newest thriller on your TBR. Dagger is an author that you have read before. And then Hardback, um, which, I don't know what weapon that translates to in the US version, but this is the group book, which full disclosure, I'm, I'm just not gonna read it. It's Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Uh, I don't own it. I don't have a lot of interest in it. I'm still doing my no buy book thing. As you can see by the fact that I have like a whole bunch of books around me, I have plenty of books to read. So I'm not actually gonna participate in that one. But for my newest thriller on the TBR, I have, I Know You Know by Jilly McMillan is something that I picked up very recently. And then another one is They All Fall Down. This is on my contemporary thon TBR as well. This is by Rachel Housel Hall. This is also favorite trope. This is the And Then There Were None trope. So a bunch of strangers get lured to this luxury vacation spot in Mexico and one by one, they get picked off. So new to me author, trope I love, new on the purchase. TBR list, whatever we want to call it. Um, another new to me author and new on my TBR is Behind Closed Doors by P.A. Paris. When I talked about this, a whole bunch of you were like, how the heck have you not read B.A. Paris yet? And I agree. I have no answer for that question other than the fact that I just haven't. So this is one I might dive into. This is also highly recommended by a whole bunch of you guys. Thank you very much. And a whole bunch of people out in the universe. So this one could very well happen. And then for um, an author I have read before, I have Hank Philippi Ryan's The Murder List. This is this is the ARC version of it. If you guys have been following me for a while and you did actually follow that thriller a time in my life last summer, then you will know that she actually reached out to me after having watched my video, which is insane. Um, and she was so, so kind enough to send me this. So she sent me an autographed copy of this. She sent me a lovely note inside, which I'm keeping inside for all the obvious reasons. But this is a book that I really need to get to. The arcs always have like a vague description on the back, but this is about a law student named Rachel. And it says that she will tell you without hesitation what she knows to be true. She's smart, she's a hard worker, she does the right things, and she's successfully married to a faithful and devoted husband, a lion of Boston's defense bar. Problem is, she's wrong. And if she takes one false step in this cat and mouse game, the battle for justice will become a battle for survival. So Hank Phillippe Ryan is incredible as all can be. She has won so many awards. She has an outstanding career. I have seen her speak multiple times at multiple conferences. She is a lovely lady. I have met her through those introductions. Um, not like I know her, know her, but I've met her at different conferences and things like that. So I read another one of her books earlier last year and I'm excited to get to this one. So I've got that cooking for me. And then last but certainly not least, 
And in all honesty, probably not gonna happen because it's almost 500 pages and that's hard for a readathon, but it's Tana French's The Likeness. So this is book number two in the Dublin Murder Squad series. I read In the Woods many years ago, thoroughly enjoyed it. I am super excited to check out the Showtime adaptation of these books. So that adaptation focuses on In the Woods and The Likeness, which is why I need to read this first. And I have talked about this as well. What I love about the Dublin Murder Squad series is that each book focuses on a different person on the squad. So you're not always getting just the same detective's perspective. And this one focuses on Cassie. She was, I would say, the second most featured person in the first book. And what happens in this is she has actually left the Dublin murder squad, but then a body of a woman has found who has an extreme likeness to Cassie. And she winds up coming back uh, to solve that and kind of to figure out what all's going on. So I'm excited to get into this. I thoroughly enjoy Tana French's writing. Part of why I haven't do dove into this is because it's huge pathetic excuse for a reader to be intimidated by a big book but sometimes you're just in the mood to like clip through things so i'm adding it to the list a because i want to have it on the forefront of my mind because i do want to read it and this will actually pop up in my series video which i think should have gone up before this one has and also i want to keep it top of mind because i do want to read it so i pulled it off the shelf so once again, a lot of books and more books that I'm ever going to read in a readathon, but they hit multiple challenges. You guys know I tend to change my mind quite a bit when I'm reading different books or doing any kind of readathon. It's the reason why I don't do TBRs because I just never know where I want to be. So let me know if you are participating in Thrillerathon. I'm so excited for it. It's definitely one of like my favorite things about a readathon is it gets me to focus on books I might not normally pick up or that I might've forgotten I have. <laughs> like evidence in point probably 80% of what I just talked about. Also let me know if you have read any of these books, thoughts, recommendations. I know like I said a couple of these haven't had the best reviews out there but that's okay but I would love to just get any kind of feedback because that always helps me focus a little bit or gets me kind of a little bit more jazzed about reading something. I will of course let you guys know what I read. I don't know if I'm gonna do targeted wrap up just for this let me know if that's something you would be interested in if you just want like a readathon wrap up versus doing what i read this month even though it's all going to cross over but if you want like a dedicated one let me know about that because i'm happy to do it that way too and if you are new here and haven't yet subscribed for sure do that because that would be amazing i put up new videos two to three times a week and hopefully you will be back for the next one Thank you for hanging out today, spending some of your time with me, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys really soon. Bye.